If you have tried to create content in low light, let's say night hiking or urban exploring or reviewing night vision equipment, you know that smartphones and the vast majority of cameras suck at filming any kind of video in low light. But Sony just released a compact camera that will change everything. This is the Sony ZV-E1. It is Sony's latest video-centric mirrorless camera that uses their famous 12-megapixel back-illuminated CMOS sensor, which is also found in high-end video cameras such as their A7S III, as well as their cinema cameras such as the FX3 and FX6. This sensor is supposed to be super good in low light, so today we're gonna push it to its absolute limits. And also, by low light, I don't mean simply going outside into the streets at night and taking video there. I am going to be testing this camera in moonlight and starlight levels of darkness, which is typically the domain of military night vision devices. Yes, I'm going to be testing this camera in places that are that dark. And as such, for this video, I'm not going to be just comparing the ZV-E1 to the video cameras that I'm already using, like the Fujifilm X-H2 or the Z-Cam E2 M4. I am also going to be comparing this camera to actual military night vision devices. Hmm, <laughs> yup. We're going to be testing this camera in conditions so dark that the question is no longer how is the image quality in low light, but rather whether or not this camera can actually see anything at all. Let's get started. Alright, so for this first test, we put a 50mm f0.95 lens onto the ZV-E1, which is the brightest lens that I can afford for this camera, and we're going to be putting it up against the X-H2 and the Z-Cam, both with f0.95 lenses of the equivalent focal length. And this is where we are testing, outdoors, in the moonlight, with no artificial light sources lighting up our scene. And why not, let's also compare the camera to our phone. Alright, let's begin. <laughs> yup, as we can see, the ZV-E1 just completely trashes all the other cameras in low light. But how will it compare to actual military night vision devices? Alright, now let's compare the ZV-E1 to actual night vision devices. First up is the Type 85 on screen here, this is a first generation unit. Then a Norinco GS610A, this is a civilian grade second generation unit. And finally, an L3 PVS-14. This is a US military current service third generation unit. Rushing through me Down on Wall Street 
And uh, yup, looks like it compares really really well to night vision units as well, but we tested it in almost full moonlight, so it's really no challenge to the night vision devices or the ZV-E1. So we're now in this underground creepy place where there's basically no light at all apart from some very very dim LEDs on the ceiling, not even sure why they're there. And believe it or not, this place actually appears a little bit darker to the human eye than what this phone footage is currently showing. So yeah, now we're talking real dark. I had a light meter that can read down to 0 0.01 lux here and it didn't read jack. So, <laughs> yup, this place is at NL3 levels of darkness, which is equivalent to very low partial moonlight. And this place also has really really dark corners like this one. And I wager that, you know, some place like this is probably down to NL4, moonless starlight levels of darkness. These conditions are starting to become challenging for even military night vision devices. So, let's see if the ZVE1 can still see anything down here. if the autofocus is still working. Is it though? Oh hey, I mean I can see on the, I can see on the screen that it's still tracking my eye through the gas mask. Okay, so that's pretty impressive. All right, yeah. Autofocusing is still working. Is it? It is. Okay. And uh, how about if I step into some really dark place? I am vlogging in what appears to be fucking starlight. Yeah, it works. Autofocus still work here. Yeah, it's hunting a little bit. It's not acquiring my eye anymore. But whatever, whatever. It still works. Oh, now it's acquired my face. <laughs> oh man, this is deeply impressive. I mean, it looks like it may be a little bit it may be struggling here a bit, it's deciding which part of the gas mask is my face, but hey, it's at least it's keeping everything in focus. So yeah, let's just keep walking around, vlogging, you know? Man, this place is dark. And yeah, I, I'm using my Gen 2 night vision right now. The GS610A, you know, Gen 2 Plus Fallout Spec night vision made by NNVT. <laughs> it's that dark in here and it doesn't look that dark in the camera because it's intensifying or rather, you know, amplifying all that light. It is seriously dark in here. Because like, if I flip out my nod, yeah, I don't see Jack. Okay, now I see. But yeah, <laughs> I really need this thing to be really able to, you know, see everything. You know, to be able to navigate effectively down here. This place is really, really dark, really, really spooky. But with this camera, it lights everything up. <sighs> it's deeply impressive. And yep, I can see that the autofocus is still drawing a box around my face. That's nice. Deeply impressive. Let me just step into the shadows, do another autofocus test. Is it still tracking? Looks like it's still tracking. Nice, nice. Some creepy sounds up there. 
don't know what it is. But hey, everything's working. All right. All right, so that concludes our vlog in the creepy place, heading back out. So yeah, the ZVE-1 remains impressive even in conditions as dark as that, but we are just getting started. We've got a bunch of high contrast items laid out on a table inside an unlit room where the only light sources are whatever moonlight that's making it through the window and one layer of curtain. And midway through the test, we're going to close a second layer of curtain and make this room basically pitch black. In conditions such as this, even the most advanced military night vision equipment will struggle to see anything. Eh, alright, let's start the test. <laughs> As you can see, the ZV-E1 is a deeply impressive camera in low light. If you're someone who films a lot of content at night or in low light, this is the camera to go to. Alright, that sums it up. Thanks for watching.